Bibles to Hosea uh, chapter 9, and uh, this evening I want to look at an interesting uh, passage in the Bible, and that's uh, Hosea chapter 9 and uh, verse 9. They have deeply corrupted themselves, as in the days of Gibeah, therefore he will remember their iniquity, he will visit their sins. Now, it's uh, Hosea chapter 9 and verse 9. Let's everybody uh, get our Bibles and let's read it uh, together uh, this evening. Hosea chapter 9 and verse 9. Together. Okay, you may be seated and uh, can somebody uh, review us tonight on... Uh, Gibeah. What is that all about? It says, as the days of, as in the days of, uh, Gibeah. Uh, anybody have a, a, a thought here about the days of, uh, Gibeah? Well, turn in your Bible to, uh, Judges chapter 19 and, uh, 20. Now, <clears throat> you see what Hosea 9 and verse 9 says, as, uh, they have deeply corrupted themselves, as in the days of uh, Gibeah. Therefore, we remember their iniquity and visit their sins. So now, see, uh, uh, what Hosea is talking about here in the Holy Spirit through the Word of God is that um, they are as bad as the people in the days of Gibeah. Now, uh, this is uh, very interesting because we learn about Gibeah in uh, uh, Judges chapter uh, 20, or uh, uh, starting to read verse 19, chapter 19. So turn in your Bible to Judges chapter 19. Now, uh, how many uh, here tonight have heard of Sodom and Gomorrah? How many? Uh, everybody here has heard of Sodom and Gomorrah, but uh, how many are familiar with the story of Gibeah? Because Gibeah uh, is a, a place in the Bible that uh, was very similar to Sodom and uh, Gomorrah. Well, we'll see that uh, uh, this evening, uh, how it is. Now, in uh, Judges chapter 19 and verses 1 through 9, we read here about uh, the Levite and his concubine. And so we'll start in chapter 19, and I don't know how far we'll get this evening, because uh, there are two entire chapters that are uh, devoted um, to this. So now what, what we're getting at is that as you read the Word of God, see, Hosea uh, uh, tells us through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that the days of Hosea were as the days of Gibeah. And this shows how wicked, ungodly the days of Hosea were. Now, we've been studying about it, and you go through the book of Hosea, and it's lying upon lying of how wicked, how ungodly, how far away uh, from God they were. Now, the prophet here in the Word of God likens them to the incident about Gibeah in the book of Judges. So, now, in Judges chapter uh, 19 and verses 1 through 9. We read here about the Levite, uh, or the, uh, the Levite and his concubine. So what we want to do is just read it because you have two entire chapters here in the Word of God. Very neglected, not well known, uh, at all. But you see, Hosea calls our attention as the days of, uh, uh Gibeah. Now, in, uh, chapter 19, uh, of Judges. Now, and it came to pass in those days there was no king in Israel. Now, here in the book of Judges is where you read where the Bible says, see, every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Now, uh, they had no central administration or leadership. And uh, then uh, this is between uh, the time of uh, Joshua's death and 
King Saul. During that time, we have a period that's referred to as the, uh, the judges, where they were backslidden outside the will of God. God raised up judges. They're more like uh, uh, spiritual leaders, call the people back to God, and so forth. But that's the book of Judges between the death of Joshua and the... Um, and, and the first king of Israel. Now, um, see, and as it says here in Judges 19 and verse 1, And it came to pass in those days when there was no king in Israel, that there was a certain Levite sojourning on the side of Mount Ephraim, who took to him a concubine out of Bethlehem. Now, uh, in the Old Testament, from time to time, we read about concubines, but obviously that was never God's perfect will, and uh, we find that in the beginning, God created uh, Adam and Eve, and Jesus put his stamp of approve, uh, approval upon that in the New Testament. And uh, whenever you read about concubines, you usually, almost without exception, there is trouble in the family. It leads to a lot of trouble and a lot of difficulty, as you read about it here in the Word of uh, God. And um, uh, uh, Judges chapter 19, verse 2. And his concubine played the whore against him. So uh, she was uh, evidently an unfaithful uh, woman and went away from him unto her father's house, uh, uh, to uh, house to Bethlehem, Judah, and uh, there were, uh, was there for four whole months. And her husband arose and went after her to speak friendly unto her and to bring her uh, again, having his servant with him, and a couple of asses, and she brought forth him uh, into her father's house. And when the father of the damsel saw him, he rejoiced to meet him. He was glad that he came to uh, retrieve uh, his concubine. Verse 4, And his father-in-law, the damsel's father, retained him, and he abode with him three days so that they did eat and drink, and he lodged there. And so they were... Uh, eating, drinking, carrying on. And it came to pass on the fourth day that they rose early in the morning uh, that he rose up to depart. And uh, the damsel's father said unto uh, his son-in-law, Comfort thine heart with a morsel of bread and afterward go your way. And uh, verse 6, And they sat down and did eat and drink, both of them together. For the damsel's father had said unto the man, Be content, I pray thee, and tarry all night and let thine heart be uh, merry. And when the man rose up to depart, his father-in-law urged him, uh, therefore he lodged there again. Uh, verse 8, Judges uh, 19. And he arose early in the morning and on the fifth day to depart. And the damsel's father said, Comfort thine heart, I pray thee. And they tarried until afternoon, and they did eat both of them. And verse 9. And when the man rose up to depart, he and his concubine and his servant and his father-in-law the damsel's father said unto him, Behold now, the day draweth toward evening. I pray you tarry all night. Behold, the day groweth to an end. Lodge here that thine heart may be, may be merry. And tomorrow um, get you early on your way that thou mayest go uh, home. Now, um, then now in verses 10 through 15, we have um, this Levite, and his concubine arriving in Gibeah. Now, uh, in verse uh, 10, the Bible says, But the man uh, would not tarry that night, but he rose up and departed and came over against Jebus, uh, which is Jerusalem. And that was, uh, it was hab inhabited at that time by the Jebusites. It wasn't, there's was no temple or any, uh, this was way before the days of David and Solomon. And so there's no significance with Jerusalem. And there were with him two asses saddled, and his concubine also uh, was with him. And when they were by uh, Jebuz, which is the old name for Jerusalem, the day was far spent, and the servant said unto his master, Come, I pray thee, and let us turn into this city of uh, Je Jebusites and lodge in it. And verse 12, and his master said unto him, we will not turn aside either into, um, into the city of a stranger that is not of the children of Israel. We will pass over to Gibeah because these were, uh, people who were not Israelites. Uh, they were, uh, ungodly, uh, people that lived in, 
uh, Jerusalem at that time. Now in verse 13, and he said unto his servant, come and let us draw near to one of the places to lodge all night, see, in Gibeah of uh, Ramah. And they passed on and went their way, and the sun went down upon them, and they were by Gibeah, which belongeth to Benjamin. Uh, Benjamin. So, say, this was an area where one of the tribes of Israel dwelt. You see, uh, in uh, Benjamin, it belonged to Benjamin. And they uh, turned aside thither to go in and to lodge in Gibeah. And when he went in, he set him down in the street of the city, and there was no man that took them into his house to lodging. So they went to Gibeah, the city in the territory of Benjamin, and uh, they're there uh, at night. And then in verses 16 through 21, what we have here is the hospitality of an old man in the city of uh, Gibeah. Now, uh, pick it up in uh, verse 16. And behold, there came an old man uh, from his work out of the field at even, uh, which was also of Mount Ephraim. And he sojourned in Gibeah, but the men of the place were Benjamites. See, that was one of the tribes of Israel. And when he had lifted up his eyes, he saw a wayfaring man in the street of the city. And the old man said, Whither goest thou? And whence, whence comest thou? And he said unto him, We are passing from Bethlehem, Judah, toward the side of Mount Ephraim, from thence am I. And uh, I went to Bethlehem, Judah, but now am going to the house of the Lord, um, uh, going to the house of the Lord, and there is no man that receiveth me uh, to house. And uh, verse uh, 19, uh, Yet there is both straw and uh, the uh, food and so forth for our asses and um, there is bread and wine also for me and for thy handmaid and for the young man which is thy servant there is no want of anything and the old man said peace be unto thee uh, howsoever let all thy wants lie upon me only lodge not in the street verse 21 so he brought him into his house and he uh, gave him uh, food and uh, provender for his asses, and uh, they washed their feet, and they did eat and drink. So now this man is on his uh, way to um, going home. And on the way home, he doesn't stop at Jerusalem because that's a heathen city. And so he winds up at Gibeah, which was a part of um, the tribe of Benjamin and an uh, is Israelite uh, city. Now, uh, in verses 22 through 26, we see what happened uh, there in the city of Gibeah. So now, uh, this man takes him in, says, I have food, I have uh, provisions for you and your animals, and just come on, uh, come on in and, and uh, in my house, and I'll take care of you uh, uh, during the night. You can sleep at my house, and hospitality in the Old Testament and even in the Middle East today is something that's very common. See, he went basically to uh, the town square and anybody would see anybody in the town square, they'd say, come to my house and you can stay in my house. You don't stay outside, but stay in my house um, uh, during uh, the night and they give them food and uh, encourage them to go on their way. And a lot of people from the Middle East... Uh, even today, see, are great on food and accommodations and taking care of people. Uh, and so that's what this, uh, this man did uh, with the Levite and his concubine. See, he took him in. He said, well, you just stay at my house tonight. Uh, you, we don't want you to sleep outside. We'll take care of your animals and uh, so forth. Now, in verses 22 through 26, um, we had the... One of the darkest passages in the Bible. Here uh, we read about uh, perverts. Here we read about those who uh, sexually um, attacked the come uh, uh, the uh, woman. Uh, and so let's pick it up in verses 22. And uh, as they were making their hearts merry, 
Behold the men of the city. See, now, I mentioned how many have heard about Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, uh, everybody has heard about Sodom and Gomorrah. Not many have heard about Gibeah, but Gibeah was as bad or even worse than Sodom and Gomorrah in a lot of ways because they sinned against the light. This was a tribe uh, of Benjamin. This was a city in Israel where this went. Uh, went on. These were, again, now, say this before King Saul ever became the first king of uh, Israel. Say the period of the judges between Joshua uh, and uh, the king. So every man did that which was right in his own eyes. And uh, But now we pick it up here in uh, verse 22. And uh, now, uh, as they were making their hearts merry, behold, the men of the city Certain sons of Belial. Now, what does that mean? See, they were worthless. They were no good. Uh, we read about that in the book of Hosea. Now, see, all of this relates to the book of Hosea. Now, what Hosea said, that you people in Israel during Hosea's day are just as bad as the Gibeonites, and God judged them, and so uh, God is definitely going uh, to judge you. But you read about Belial in the New Testament they were really the children of the devil. They were totally controlled by demonic, satanic uh, uh, forces. And it says, um, beset the house round about and beat the door. See, very similar to Sodom and Gomorrah. And, um, and they spake to the master of the house, the old man saying, see, and uh, now the Levite and his concubine is inside the house. And they uh, said to the old man in verse 22, saying, bring forth the man, man that came into thine house, that we may know him. See, the same thing as Sodom and Gomorrah. See, uh, these were homosexuals. They were active, uh, sexual homosexuals. Why? That's what the Bible says. Uh, see, it says, and they came into thy house, that we may know them. In other words, uh, have immoral relations with them. I'm sure you know that's what that means when it says that we may know him. It doesn't mean, you know, know him as a friend or talk to him. Uh, just like in Sodom and Gomorrah, you read about that in other places in the Old Testament. See, uh, the homosexuals uh, said, we want to have sexual relations with these men, uh, uh, with the man. And uh, verse 23, uh, this is Judges 19, verse 23. And the man, the master of the house, went out unto them and said unto them, Nay, my brethren, nay, I pray you, do not so wickedly. In other words, uh, don't do such a wicked, ungodly thing uh, here. And uh, seeing that this man is coming to my house, uh, do not uh, this folly. In other words, see, this man is someone that uh, just came, he's, he's going through, now he's going to lodge in my house, I'm responsible to take care of him, so please don't do uh, what you want to do to this man. See, very similar to Sodom and Gomorrah. Now, behold, verse 24, here is my daughter, a maiden. See, very similar to Sodom and Gomorrah. Remember, Lot said, well, uh, don't take these men that are staying with me, but take my daughter. Very, very uh, similar. So um, he says, uh, 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 behold, here is my daughter, a maiden, uh, and his concubine, and I will bring uh, out now and humble ye them and do with them what seemeth good unto you, but unto this man do not a vile thing. So he says, well, just uh, uh, take uh, uh, the woman uh, and just uh, do what you want with her. And then in verse um, 25, the Bible says, but the men would not listen to him. See, they said, we don't want the women, we want the man. Now, see, here is a clear teaching in the Word of God. Now, I'm sure we don't have to turn to it, but the Old Testament is very uh, uh, clear that um, in Leviticus 18, 22, Leviticus 20 and verse 13, that homosexual is an abomination in the sight of God. It was uh, uh, a homosexual, oh, uh, the uh, 
penalty for homosexuality in the Old Testament was death. Now, uh, of course, we're not under the law today. We're under uh, grace. But homosexuality is also condemned several times in the New Testament as a sin against God. For, for instance, 1 Corinthians 6 and um, mentions that homosexuals, adulterers, fornicators will not enter into the kingdom of God. They're unsaved. They don't know uh, uh, the Lord. But uh, so that was a sin that was condemned in the Old Testament, just like in uh, the book of um, Hosea. See, the sins that they committed were condemned under the law in uh, the Old Testament, but they went on and did them anyway. Now, in verse 25, but the men would not listen to him. So the men took his concubine and brought her forth unto them. And uh, they knew her and abused her all night. See, what you have here is a gang rape. And they raped her all night. See, not for an hour or two hours. Now, see what it says in verse 25. Um, and abused her, verse 25, all the night until the morning. Now, that is perversion. See, that is somebody... Uh, these men were uh, perverts of the perverts, so to speak, and um, until the morning. And when the day began to spring, they let her go. So they abused her, uh, raped her all night. And what you have here is a gang rape. And uh, um, then in verse 26, then came the woman in the dawning of the day and fell down at the door of the man's house where her uh, Lord was till it was uh, light. And so um, what we have here is, uh, you see, they practiced. Now, see, here's the uh, interesting thing. See, these are not pagans. They are not Canaanites. They are members of the tribe of Benjamin. They are Israelites. But now what you see here in the book of Judges is very, very clear. Right after uh, Joshua died, you see, in the promised land, they didn't do what he told them. He said, drive out all the inhabitants of the land. They never did that. They never obeyed what Joshua said or what the Lord told them to do. And so now you have God's people practicing the morals of the land in which they dwelt. What a message right there. Amen. You see, they practiced, you see, the morals of the land in which they dwelt. Well, everybody's doing it. Therefore, it's all right for us to do it. And that's what uh, these people were saying, these Benjamites. And then, uh, um, see, that was the result of worshiping Baal. That's why as we're getting in the Old Testament uh, studies, it's very, very edifying to put the Word of God uh, together. See, in Hosea's day, they worship Baal. Now, in these days, see, they were uh, in the, the land of Canaan, in the promised land, but you see, they fell in to the morals of the land and the religion of the land. And now, uh, you see, they're practicing the morals of the, the land and you see, this conduct was approved by Baal. See, they had no morals whatsoever. Not that they had a little moral uh, teaching. They had none. You see, and that was approved by Baal. See, the immorality was actually approved by the heathen god that they were uh, uh, worshiping. So it became another Sodom, what you have here in the, uh, the Word of God. And so what you have here are active homosexuals, you see, committing uh, and engaged in practice that's condemned in the Bible. Now, you see how this fits in with the book of Hosea. Now, number one, they took upon them the morals of the land. See, they didn't uh, follow the Word of God, what God said. 
And uh, uh, number two, you see, all of this was approved by the pagan god that they were worshiping. See, it's all right to do that. That was uh, that was not condemned in any way by the um, uh, by uh, the god Baal. Now, uh, in verses uh, 27 through uh, chapter 20 and verse 11, you see um, we see uh, the crime here and how it was reported to Israel. Now, verse 27. And our Lord rose up in the morning and opened the doors of the house. Now, um, now see, he was in the house. He was probably sleeping. Didn't even try to protect her, but whatever. Uh, verse 27. And our Lord rose up in the morning and opened the doors of the house and went out to go his way. And behold, the woman, his concubine, was fallen down at the door of the house. And you read on just a moment, she was dead. She died. She was dead uh, on the front porch. And and her hands were upon the threshold. And uh, verse 28, Judges uh, 19, verse 28, uh, 28, and he said unto her, up and let her be going. But, uh, see, she, uh, but none answered. She didn't answer. Then the man took her up upon an ass and the mo, uh, man rose up and got, got him into uh, his place. And when he was come into his house, he took a knife, see, because she's already dead. She died as a result of all that abuse the entire night. Uh, she was gang raped. You read about it. See, and again, see, there are lessons here as we study the Bible and as we study the Word of God and uh, things that uh, we can be edified from. Now, in verse 29, he took a knife and laid hold on his concubine and divided her together with her bones into 12 pieces and sent her into all the coast of Israel. Now, why did he uh, take a knife? This is really, yeah, that's why I say, see, as the days of Gibeah, see, Hosea is saying, that's the way you were. Now, uh, as I said, see, everybody knows about Sodom and Gomorrah. Most people don't know about Gibeah. Now, he takes her and uh, he, uh, as the Bible says here, he divides her up into 12 pieces and he gives a piece to every uh, tribe in the nation of Israel. That's why there are 12 pieces. You see, to prove what was done and this terrible thing that was done unto her. Now, in verse 30, and it was so that all that saw it said, see, all the different tribes now, there was no such deed done nor seen from the day that the children of Israel came up out of the land of Egypt unto this day. Consider of it, take advice, and speak your minds. Now, and they said that since we have been delivered from Egypt uh, up until this time, we've never heard of such brutality in the nation of Israel where uh, this woman was molested all night and murdered by the men of Gibeah, which was part of uh, uh, Israel. And then uh, in verse 20, We read here in uh, uh, verse 20. Then all the children of Israel went out and the congregation was gathered together as one man. Now, see, they didn't have any king at this time. Uh, Every man did that which was right in their own eyes. All the 12 tribes heard about it. And, uh, well, Levin, not uh, uh, Benjamin, they were the ones that did it. And uh, um, so they gathered together uh, and so forth as one man. See, they gathered together. They had a conference they uh, uh, said, well, what are we going to do? Because we know that this is bad. This is terrible. Uh, this thing that was done in our uh, nation. And uh, uh, from Dan, verse tw- uh, 20, chapter 20, verse 1, even a Beersheba with the land of Gilead and uh, the Lord in uh, unto the Lord in Mizpah. In other words, they came from all over Israel. Say all of the 12, uh, well, 11 tribes uh, excluding the tribe of Benjamin, was uh, represented in this. And um, so all the 12 tribes. And then verse 2, And the chief of all the people, even all the tribes of Israel, presented themselves in the assembly of the people of God 
400,000 footmen and drew a sword. So now, out of the 12 tribes, they gathered 400,000 soldiers. See what it says here? 400,000 footmen that drew the sword. So they have 400,000 soldiers. And they said, we are going to uh, hold these people accountable uh, that did that. Now, uh, you read here in verse 3. Now, the children of Benjamin heard that the children of Israel were going up to Mizpeth. Then said the children of Israel, tell us how was this wickedness? And the Levite, you see, the husband of the woman that was slain answered and said, I came to Gibeah that belongeth, say, to Benjamin, the tribe of Benjamin, I and my concubine to lodge. And the men of Gibeah rose up against me, verse 5, and beset the house round about me by night and thought to have slain me. You see, and my concubine have they forced uh, that she is dead. See, when he went out in the morning on the front porch, he's dead. You see, and uh, I took my concubine and cut her in pieces and sent her throughout all the country of the inheritance of Israel, for they have committed lewdness and folly in Israel. So, and then uh, that's why he divides her up into 12 pieces. Each tribe gets uh, a piece. Behold, ye are all children of Israel. Uh, uh, give here your advice and counsel. So you see, they got together. They had this counsel. They had this meeting. And uh, chapter 20 and verse 8. And all the people rose as one man. See, everybody in Israel was agreed that this was terrible. It was wicked. It was something that was shameful. And they had to do something about it. Now, um, in verse 8. We will not any of us go to his tent, neither will uh, we any of us turn unto his house. But now this thing shall be the thing which we will do to Gibeah. Um, we will go up uh, by lot against it. Now, in other words, they choose the soldiers, probably talking that uh, by lot, which was done in the Old Testament. And we will take ten men uh, of a hundred throughout all the tribes of Israel and a hundred of a thousand, evidently like a, ten, a tenth, and a thousand out of ten thousand to fetch uh, victuals for the people that they may do when they come to Gibeah of Benjamin according to the folly that they have wrought in Israel. So all the men of Israel were gathered against the city and knit together as one man. So you have that uh, over and over again as one man. So they all realized this was wrong. They all realized that they had a responsibility uh, to deal with this particular uh, uh, situation. Now in verses um, 12 and uh, 13, you see, we see here the rejection uh, of uh, the verdict by the uh, Benjamites. See, in verses 12 and 13, and the tribes of Israel sent men throughout all the tribe of Benjamin. See, now, Benjamin... That was the tribe, uh, the territory where Gibeah was located, see, in uh, Benjamin, saying, what wickedness is this that is done among you? Imagine that. They said, now, uh, what is this all about? See, how, uh, what's this wickedness that you've done all about? Now, therefore, deliver us, and they said, the men of the children of Belial. And so what they said is what you need to do is turn over these men to us so that, and obviously they wanted to uh, execute them because that would have been the penalty under uh, the Jewish law. Now in verse 13, Now therefore deliver us the men, the children of Belial, which are in Gibeah. See, while we're getting into this is because Hosea says, as you are as the people of Gibeah. You see, Hosea 9 and verse 9. So it's good to go into it, understand what he's talking about. And the Bible says uh, that we may put them to death. See, that would have been the penalty 
for these men who gang raped uh, this woman and murdered this woman. That uh, the uh, these Israelites got together from the 12, uh, 11 tribes. They said, uh, we'll put them uh, to death. And put away evil from Israel. So they said, we know this is wrong. This is evil. You shouldn't do it. And uh, these men uh, are deserving of death. Now, but the children of Benjamin, see, would not hearken to the voice of their brethren, the children of Israel. You see, uh, the tribe of Benjamin, they said, no, we're not going to allow you to take these men and execute These men, we're not going to allow you to do it. Now, in verses 14 through uh, 18, you see, this causes a civil war in the nation of Israel. Now, the 11 tribes will go to war against the tribe of Benjamin. So, you see, the the history of Israel is not a a very uh, nice history to put it mildly, amen? Say, now they are going to war against one another. Say, the 11 tribes against the tribe of uh, Benjamin. Now, in uh, verses um, 14 through 18, And the children of Benjamin gathered themselves together out of the cities unto Gibeah to go out to the battle against the children of Israel. So what you have here is a civil war. Say, and the children of uh, uh, Benjamin are making war on the nation of Israel. Civil uh, a war. And um, verse 15. And the children of Benjamin were numbered at that time out of the cities 26,000 men that drew the sword besides the inhabitants of Gibeah, which were numbered 700 uh, chosen men. Among all his people, there were 700 chosen men left-handed, and everyone could sling stones at a hairbreadth and not miss. So they were experts uh, with the sling and the the slinging, as it says here, uh, of uh, the the stones. Now, which um, was a lethal weapon. That was like a rifle. They tell us that those... um, Slings like David when he uh, slew Goliath with the uh, the sl- uh, sling and uh, so forth. What we read uh, uh, about that is when, when someone would propel one of those stones out of a sling, it had the exact same force as a high caliber revolver. And that's why it killed Goliath on the spot. You see, that one stone killed him. It was like shooting him in the head. Uh, you see, with, with a gun. So these were expert um, soldiers that were very, very uh, dangerous. And it says here, everyone could sling stones at a hair's breadth and not miss. Say, so, say so they were expert uh, uh, soldiers. Now, verse 17. And the reason why we're reading it and going verse by verse is to see what it's all about. Amen. So we might understand what's going on. And why Hosea says, you're as bad as the uh, people were in the days of Gibeah. So if we don't understand about Gibeah, and like tonight, say everybody's heard about Sodom and Gomorrah, very few people have ever heard about uh, Gibeah and uh, what we're reading and studying tonight. And the men of Israel, verse 17, beside Benjamin were numbered 400,000 men that drew the sword all of these were men of war. So, say the nation, the 11 tribes had 400,000 men. They uh, totally outnumbered the soldiers from uh, the um, tribe of uh, Benjamin. They had, the Bible says here, uh, 700 chosen men and uh, so forth and uh, uh, different. So, they were totally outnumbered, the uh, people uh, that uh, the... Benjamites that lived in the area of Gibeah. And then uh, verse 18, And the children of Israel arose and went up to the house of God. You see, the children of Israel. And they asked counsel of God and said, Which of us shall go up first to battle against the children of Benjamin? And the Lord said, Judah shall go first. See, the tribe of Judah. See, so they inquired of the Lord. 
And he said, uh, the ones that will go first in the battle have probably the most casualties will be Judah. And then in verses 19 through 23, uh, you see, we have three battles here. Now, the first battle is recorded here in verses 19 through 23. And by the way, this very edifying, again, uh, neglected passage of the Scripture. Most of the time, you know, we uh, don't get into something like this. haven't heard much about it. But now uh, in verses 19 through 23, the first of the three battles. And the children of Israel rose up in the morning and encamped against Gibeah. Now, say again, Gibeah is the city where the woman was raped all night and murdered. You say, that's Gibeah. That's the city of Gibeah. And the men of Israel went out to battle against Benjamin. And the men of Israel put themselves in array to fight against them at Gibeah. And the children of Benjamin came forth out of Gibeah and destroyed down to the ground the Israelites that day. And uh, 20 and 2,000 men. Now, that's very uh, interesting because as you read the word of God here, so you have a civil war between the tribe of Benjamin and the 11 other tribes. The 11 other tribes went to God. They got counsel from God. And who won the first battle? See, the Benjamites won the first battle. And 22,000 Israelites died that day in the battle. You see, um, 20, verse 21, 20 uh, and 2,000 men. And the people, the men of Israel, encouraged themselves and set their battle array uh, in, in the place where they put themselves in array the first day. And the children of Israel went up and went before the Lord, even uh, until even, and asked counsel of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up again to battle against the children of Benjamin? And the Lord said, Go up again. See, the second time. And they wept bitterly and they said, Lord, we're, <clears throat> it's an interesting passage in the Word of God, amen? Say, they're doing God's will. And uh, you would have thought they would have won the battle. They didn't uh, win the battle. They lost the battle and lost 22,000 men. Now, the second battle is verses 24 through 28. The reason why we're taking time to read it is because you got to get it before you, before you really can see what's going on and understand the Bible and so forth. So now... Uh, in verses 24 through 28. And the children of Israel came near against the children of Benjamin, say the second day. So now you have the second battle. And Benjamin went forth against them out of Gibeah the second day and destroyed down to the ground the children of Israel. Uh, again, 18,000 men, all, the, uh, all uh, the, uh, these drew the sword. So now in the second battle, you have 18 thousand men that were lost from the nation of Israel. Now, 18,000 and 22,000 are how many? See, 40,000. So they lost 40,000 soldiers in the nation of Israel. It's amazing as you study the Bible. You see, uh, you'd have thought that they would have won and the Gibeonites, that they didn't. See, the Gibeonites uh, won the first two battles. Now, the third battle, um, chapter 20 and verse, um, well, uh, tw- let's look at verse 26. And the children of Israel and all um, uh, the people went up and came to the house of God, and they wept and sat there before the Lord. See, uh, verse 26. And fasted even until evening and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. Now, that's very, very uh, interesting. See, they fasted. Evidently, they prayed. They uh, made burnt offerings unto the Lord. That's simply another way of saying, at this time, they really got their hearts right with God. Now, were they overconfident before? Um, did they uh, presume uh, victory without really being right uh, with God? Well, the Bible says in verse 27, And the children of Israel inquired of the Lord, for the um, Ark of the Covenant was there in those days. 
And Phineas, and by the way, he's a great character in the Old Testament. See, Phineas, as you read about him in the Word of God, is always protecting the holiness of God. You see, he's the one that slew those Moabites, um, uh, who, the Israelites who sinned with the Moanites, uh, Moabites during the days of Balaam. See, that was Phineas. He, he was a, a garter, uh, he guarded the holiness of God. He's a great character in the Old Testament. Phineas, the son of Eleazar, say the son of Aaron. He was the grandson of uh, Aaron. Stood before in those days saying, Shall I yet again go out to battle against the children of Benjamin, my brother? You see, that there's a brother. See, this is civil war. Benjamin was one of the tribes of Israel. Uh, or shall I cease? And the Lord said, Go up for tomorrow, I will deliver them into thy hand. He said, so, so Phineas intercedes and, and the Lord says, go uh, up tomorrow. Now this is the third battle that we read about uh, in the word of God. Now, why did they lose the first two battles? Uh, I think it's very uh, insightful to just think about that for a brief moment. See, why do you think they lost the first two battles? And they lost 40,000 men. 40,000 innocent men were lost as a result of the original sin uh, that the Gibeonites committed. Well, why do you think they lost, uh, uh, they lost 40,000 men? So certainly, uh, they could well have been overconfident. See, they had 400,000. And they totally outnumbered, see, the 11 tribes totally outnumbered the tribe of Benjamin. But you see, rather than winning the battle, they lost the battle. You see, they lost the first two uh, battles. Anybody else have a, a, a thought here? Okay, and uh, it, it's just uh, interesting to study the Bible and uh, see what is being said here. Now, again, as I've said many, many times, see... Uh, the, uh, the Bible doesn't say what we think it says. See, the Bible doesn't say what we want it to say. It says what is real and what really happened. See, it's reality. The Bible is uh, reality. And um, we don't know. The Bible doesn't say. It seems like they, uh, before they went into the third battle... Uh, the indication there is they really got their hearts right with God. See, they prayed, they fasted, they really looked to the Lord and, and, uh, so forth and, uh, really got right, uh, with, with God. Could they have been overconfident? You know, uh, the story of, um, the battle of Ai, how that, say they lost the battle of Ai. And keep in mind, say the city of Ai should have been the easiest city to conquer in the promised land. And the easiest city was where we learned that they were uh, defeated. Why? Because, see, there's sin in the camp and there's sin in the nation of Israel. Now, the thing here is um, I think we can all see what you have here in the Bible is the depths of iniquity. See, the dark, they were sons of Belial. They were the perverts of the perverts. They were wicked. They were ungodly. Uh, people that did this dastardly, uh, sinful act of, uh, molesting the woman all night and then, uh, resulted in her murdering her. Now, you see, we live in a wicked world. I think most of the time we underestimate the power of darkness. And the power of sin. You see. And uh, when someone seeks to live for the Lord. In this world in which we live. Make sure you are in fellowship with the Lord. Because see the powers of darkness. Want to mess you up at every turn. You see there's no way. To really live for the Lord. In the midst of this world. You see, the Bible says Satan is the god of this world. He's the prince in power of the air. See, and uh, really, uh, uh, see, uh, people need to be really right with God because we are involved in spiritual warfare. And 
we can never underestimate the power of darkness. Now, as you read on here, uh, in the third uh, battle, verse 29, and Israel said liars. Now, that's, uh, that simply means people in ambush. See, and now they have a new plan. They're going to send some soldiers in the front lines and uh, the Gibeonites are going to think that that's, uh, they're doing the same thing they did in the first two battles, but now they have people ambushed all on the sides and so forth, and this is a, a, a trick to draw them out. And uh, Israel said uh, liars or an ambush in wait round about Gibeah, see the city of Gibeah. And verse 30, And the children of Israel went up against the children of Benjamin the third day and put themselves in array against Gibeah as at other times. See, they're tricking them. See, they're thinking you're going to do the same thing now that you did um, before. See, but it's a trick. See, why? Because now the Israelites have all these people encamped around the city and those... Um, uh, soldiers are just there to trick them, say, to, to get them uh, in a position where the people in the ambush could really uh, uh, destroy uh, them. And so um, we, we read about here, as at other times, last part of verse 30, verse 31, and the children of Benjamin went out against the people and were uh, drawn away from the city, you see, and they began to smite the people and kill as at other times in the highways, which one goeth up to the house of God and the other to Gibeah uh, to the, uh, in the field, about 30 men of Israel. So they actually uh, killed 30 more men. But the children of Benjamin said, they are smitten down before us as at the first. But you see, they had a, the Israelites had a different plan. Uh, but the children of Israel said, let us flee and draw them from the city unto the highway. See, their whole plan was to draw them out into a place where they could uh, attack them through the ambush. And all the men of Israel rose out of their place and put themselves in array against uh, Baal, Tamar, and the liars, or see, those that were um, in the ambush uh, in wait of Israel came forth out of their places, even out of the meadows of Gibeah. And there came against Gibeah 10,000 chosen men out of Israel and the battle was sore, it was hard, difficult. And they knew not uh, that uh, evil uh, was near near them, the Benjamites. And uh, the Lord smote uh, Benjamin before Israel. So now they're defeated. And the children of Israel destroyed the Benjamites that day, 20 and 5,000 and 100 men, uh, all these that drew the sword. So they wiped out almost all of their... Uh, uh, soldiers of uh, Benjamin. So the children of Benjamin saw that they were smitten from the men of Israel and gave place um, to the Benjamites because they trusted uh, unto, you see, those people in ambush um, that lie wait, which they set besides Gibeah. And all the liars or these people in the ambush waited, hastened, and rushed upon Gibeah and uh, uh and these people that came out of these ambushes in the wait uh, drew themselves along and smote all the city with the edge of the sword. And uh, now there was an appointed sign between the men of Israel and uh, those that would lay in this ambush and wait that they should make a great flame and smoke and rise up out of the city. And when the men of Israel uh, retired in the battle, Benjamin began to smite and kill uh of the men of Israel, about 30 persons, for they said, surely they are smitten down before us, say, as at the first battle or the first two battles. But when the uh, flame began to rise up out of the city with a pillar of smoke, the Benjamites looked behind them and behold, the flame of the city ascended up to heaven. And when the men of Israel turned again, the men of Benjamin were amazed for they saw that evil was come, you see, upon uh, them. And so we see there's the, the a third battle. And then the flight of uh, the Benjamites, verse 42. Therefore they turned their backs before the men of Israel unto the way of the wilderness, and uh, but the battle overtook them. And them which uh, came out of the cities 
uh, they destroyed in the midst of them. Thus they enclosed the Benjamites around and chased them and trod them down uh, with ease over against Gibeah toward the sun rising. And there fell a Benjamin 18,000 men. And all these were men of value, val- valor. And they turned and fled toward the wilderness unto the rock Rimon, uh, and they uh, gleaned. They were cut down, or they destroyed of them in the highways. 5,000 men pursued hard after them unto Gibeah, and slew 2,000 men of them. And all uh, which fell that day of Benjamin were 20 and 5,000 men that drew the sword. All of those were uh, men of valor. valor. Verse 47, but 600 men turned and fled to the wilderness, to the rock of Rimmon, and abode there in the rock of Rimmon four months. And the men of Israel turned again upon the children of Benjamin and smote them with the edge of the sword, as well as the men of every city and the beast and all that came um, to the hand. Uh, so they set fire on all the cities that they came to, all the cities around uh, uh, Gibeah. Now, um, that we read on purpose to help us to understand about Gibeah. You see, and the sin of Gibeah. Now, see, the entire tribe of Benjamin only had 600 men left in the entire tribe. See, all of the others were slain by the Israelites. You only had 600 men uh, in the entire nation uh, or tribe of Benjamin that uh, that, uh, survived this. Now, we see how uh, 40,300 were destroyed uh, soldiers of uh, Israel. So that is the Old Testament story of Gibeah. The Gibeonites, what Hosea 9 and verse 9 is referring to. One of the most gruesome passages in all the Bible, amen? One of the saddest passages in all of the Bible. See, because of their sin, they started a civil war and they wound up being totally wiped out and only having six hundred men left in the tribe of Benjamin. Very interesting as we uh, study the Word of God. Now, anybody have a thought or a comment about this very, very gruesome uh, passage in the Word of God? See, during the days of the judges, say, every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Here they had a civil war. They were fighting against one another. Say, uh, there were, uh, some of the Israelites were picked up all of the ungodly perversion of the people uh, of the land and uh, the uh, tribe of uh, Benjamin. They picked up all those wicked, terrible uh, uh, practices. So uh, it was a sad day in the nation of Israel. Somebody have any... Uh, question or comment or observation about this passage in uh, the Word of God. Very interesting. It was a very dark day. Now, see, most everyone would say this probably was the darkest day in the nation of Israel. This was on the par of Sodom and Gomorrah, which uh, happened way back during the days of Abraham and Lot. That was way, way back uh, in history. But now the nation of Israel. This was, beyond doubt, the worst single episode in the nation of Israel. It was a terrible, terrible uh, uh, situation uh, there in the nation of Israel. See, uh, it was a, a sad day. Now, let's turn back to the book of Hosea, see, because that's what we're studying. So, we want to study the Word of God. And in uh, um, Hosea chapter 9 and in verse 9, you see, they have deeply corrupted themselves. See, what we're talking about here in the nation 
of Israel during the days of Hosea. And someone might say, well, it's just, um, it's just sin after sin and, and Hosea is thundering out against the nation of, uh, Israel. And, uh, someone might say, well, they, they couldn't have been that bad. See, the nation of Israel couldn't have been that, uh, sinful. But you see what it says? It says, they have deeply corrupted themselves. See, they not only sinned against God, they sinned deeply against God. And, uh, as in the days of Gibeah, imagine that. See, God said, you are as bad as the Gibeonites who committed such wicked, ungodly, terrible sin. You are as bad as them. See, as in the days of Gibeah. That's why we took time to read the passage, so we understand it. See what he's talking about. You see, therefore, verse 9, he will remember their iniquity and visit their sins. Now, the word visit speaks ju- uh, speaks of judgment. To talk about just visiting somebody, that's another way to refer to judgment. He will remember their iniquity and visit their sins. What a verse in the Word of God. See, he will remember their sin and he is going to judge their sin. Now, uh, and he said, you are as bad as the people of Gibeah. And they were deserving of the judgment of God because of what they did. Such a terrible, heinous crime was committed. Say, uh, there. But you see, you are just as bad as them. See, they, they, uh, went down into the depths of pollution and the depths of sin. You see, and so God, what we learn here in the Word of God, see, God judges sin. He judged the sin of Gibeah. Almost the entire tribe of Benjamites were wiped out. Just 600 men that were left in the entire uh, tribe. You see, God judged them. And what Hosea is saying, God is going to judge you for your sins. Well, that's the teaching of the Word of God. Amen? See, uh, as we study the Old Testament, God judges sin. Now, does God overlook sin? Does the Bible teach that God, some grandfather, pats everybody on the back, says, oh, it doesn't matter you know, just live any way you want, do anything. No, you see, God judges sin. You see, and we certainly see that as we study the book of Hosea. But you see, as, you see, they have deeply corrupted themselves as in the days of Gibeah, therefore he will remember their iniquity and visit, say, their sin. Say, God is a God who judges sin. Now, we don't hear about that today. Uh, there's no fear of God before the eyes of many. But God knows what our sin is, and God judges uh, sin. Any thought or comment as we think about that? That's uh, Gibeah. That's the story of Gibeah. The darkest day in the nation of Israel. Certainly one of the darkest days. Uh, what were the Benjamites doing? See, they, uh, uh, they were protecting sin. See, they uh, were saying, we're going to uh, protect those that did wrong rather than owing up to it, confessing it. And uh, you see, thousands of people would not have died if they simply did the right thing. You see, uh, they obviously didn't repent and, uh, and they just uh, uh, sided with those that were doing wrong and they were condoning the wrong. They didn't turn them over. So... Um, what a wicked day it was. See, and then again, that almost wiped out the entire uh, tribe, the cause of civil war. Tens of thousands of people died. See, that's what sin does. See, and rather than uh, owing up to it, if they owed up to it, they could have got the thing straightened out in God's way. And those people would have been uh, executed who did that. And then there would have been justice, but that's not what went on. Any other question or comment or observation? Because again, uh, this is uh, the Bible. 
See, and uh, we need to understand the Word of God, and it will edify us as uh, God's children. Gilgal was where they had the golden calf, where they're worshiping the golden calf. So, um, but Gilgal was a different situation altogether. Here, years later, in Gilgal, they're worshiping the golden calf. See, and that's where God says, see, I hate it. See, uh, here you're worshiping a false god. See, and that was their, like, center in Israel of false worship. And, uh, um, but uh, the reason why I went into it, we read two whole chapters, every word, every verse. Why? See, to get it before us to see what's going on so we can understand the Bible and understand what Hosea is talking about. And I think we all realize now, uh, he said, you, you have fallen into sin as deep as those Gibeonites. And as uh, they were judged, you're going to be judged. I'm going to judge uh, uh, your sin. So it's a very dark day. And always keep in mind, it's as bad as Sodom and Gomorrah, their sin. They, they, the same thing that went on in Sodom and Gomorrah went on there with the uh, Gibeonites. See, a lesson we can all learn is, um, again, there were tens of thousands of people who lost their lives in the Civil War. You see, a uh, little over 40,000 from Israel, then almost the entire tribe of Benjamin is wiped out. If they simply did the right thing, amen? Say, rather than covering up the sin and saying, we're not going to confess to it, we're not going to give these men over to you to execute uh, them. We're going to side with these perverts, you see? And so as a result of it, you see, uh, all of that tragedy came in. A great lesson in getting right with God, and when somebody gets right with God, you see, they avoid a lot of trouble. See, when people don't get right with God, they don't do what God wants them to do, it leads to a lot of trouble, and, you know, we, we don't like to say it, but a lot of innocent people are hurt when somebody sins against God. See, these people sin against God, and there's a lot, tens of thousands of innocent people died and were affected because of the sin of these men that night in the city of Gibeah. See, the Bible teaches sin is a terrible thing, and sin has consequences, not only in the future, not only in relation to hell, and um, but even in this life, sin is a terrible thing. See, and we play around with sin, we take sin lightly, and we don't realize how devastating sin is and how destructive sin is.